five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts. A five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Firefighters! Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire! In just a moment, we'll join Chief Cody, rookie fireman Tim Collins and his young brother Jimmy aboard the most complicated and efficient piece of apparatus in the entire fire department, the fireboat. You'll recall that to the chief, this was merely a routine inspection trip. To Tim, it was another opportunity in his plan to make a thorough study of the science of fighting fire. But to Jimmy, the trip had been an exciting surprise. If any of them had known just how exciting and surprising it was to turn out, well, well, we'll get back to what happened in just a minute. Let's go, firefighters. Let's join rookie fireman Tim Collins and his young brother Jimmy as they stand alone near the stern monitor of the fireboat. Only a moment ago, Jimmy had watched this huge brass nozzle, which looked to him like a gun pointing to the sky. Well, Jimmy watched it in action. He had seen the powerful stream of water, which could tear down a brick wall or fill a swimming pool in less than a minute. He watched it shoot out over the harbor. But then, something happened that sounded like the real thing. Captain Jarvis had appeared on the bridge, and suddenly they heard his voice on the loudspeakers that carries his orders to all parts of the ship. Stations! All hands, stations! Seconds later, both Tim and Jimmy knew that this was no longer practice. Cast off your line! Hey, you over the wall! Step into it! Uh, Holy smoke, we're leaving the dock, Tim! We're backing out! Boy, is that fast. Yeah, that siren ought to warn any boats to give us a wide berth, huh, Jimmy? I bet. Once we're out of the dock, we'll know what direction we're going, where the fire is. Oh, now, don't get excited, Jimmy. We don't know what's up yet. I don't see any smoke anywhere, do you? No, but there's Chief Cody on the bridge with Captain Jarvis now. Yeah. Let's go see what's going No, sir. And that's an order. If there's trouble ahead, Jimmy, the captain has enough on his mind right now without us under his feet. Uh, that uh, tugboat in the harbor, Chief Cody. Here, take my binoculars. Thanks. Right. And listen, those short blasts on her whistle, she's really asking for help. Yeah, I see now. A few wisps of smoke coming from that barge she's towing. In the direction they're heading, they're fighting both wind and tide. Mm, too bad. Looks like a simple enough operation at the moment, Jarvis. We'll have to see what happens in the next few minutes, Chief. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, I suppose a big fire could endanger those docks. It if... could be, Chief. It could be. That radio message that sent you rushing up here, Captain... You know something I don't. Well, I don't like to dream up trouble, but this could be a nightmare. Even a small fire on that barge. They radioed you what the cargo is, right? Yes, sir. 35,000 gallons of oil. That's all, sir. 35,000 gallons of oil. That's all, you say? Only enough to set off the biggest blazing inferno that ever floated inside this harbor. That's right. Unless we get there in time. Well, you're the expert of the Marine Division, Captain Jarvis. I consider myself at your disposal. Thank you, sir. Unless we're lucky, I may need all the help I can get. Perhaps you'd better bring Private Collins and that kid brother of his to the control bridge. I hope I'm not going to be sorry I brought Jimmy along. If we're going to run into trouble, he'll be better off up there with me. Anyway, I'll check the situation further. A few moments later, Tim and Jimmy find themselves in the circular wheelhouse, staring out of the wide windows that give such an excellent view of the harbor. The turn back as Captain Jarvis enters, closing the door behind him. The relative quiet of the room, plus the calm way the captain spreads out a chart on the table, and the cool, efficient way in which he speaks, gives them no clue of the possibilities of disaster. I'd like you to take a look at this chart of the harbor, Chief Cody. Uh, Private Collins also. Uh, yes, sir. Well, <laughs> looks like you found some use for a couple of land lovers after all, Captain Jarvis. Mm, that all depends, Chief. Now, my first plan of action is the obvious one. As soon as we're in striking position, the first group will speed to that barge aboard the launch. Say, you mean this boat carries a smaller boat? Well, of course, Jimmy. 
You're making a place in the launch for Tim and myself, Captain? Yes. I'm taking advantage of your offer of help, Chief. Uh, naturally, that includes me, sir. Are you familiar with the foam generator, Tim? Well, yes, sir, I am. Good. If it's okay with Chief Cody, you can board the barge with my men. If that's possible by the time we get there. Uh, do you see the connection between the captain's mention of foam and that fire, Tim? Yes, sir, I'm afraid I do, Chief. It must mean the barge is carrying oil. 35,000 gallons. Now, we don't know the origin of that fire yet. From the smoke, it definitely isn't oil. Not yet. With luck, it won't be, Captain. I hope you're right, Chief. But if you're not, well, here's our second plan of attack. Do you uh, see our position on this chart of the harbor? Uh, yes, sir, right there where your pencil's pointing. Correct. Now, if that barge goes up in flames before we do our job, the docks, warehouses, plants, all that property along the waterfront, uh, you see where I'm making this circle? Mm, yes, yeah. There must be millions of dollars worth of property in that circle you've drawn. Right. And it will be in serious danger. I don't quite see how, sir. The barge is surrounded by water, and it's fairly well out in the harbor. Mm, you land companies have to think of the wind sometimes, Tim. But we have to worry about the tide as well. Live and learn, huh, Tim? Yes, sir. That uh, line you're tracing is the direction of the current, Captain? Yes. Now, if our first plan of attack fails, our problem will be to see that this barge does not drift ashore in the direction the tide and wind will carry it. Right smack into that waterfront property. Yes, right. sir, but, Chief, as long as that tugboat has it in tow... If why... I may answer that, Chief Cody. Now, suppose that skull went up in flames under your nose, Tim. What would your first instinct be? I see what you mean, sir. You're afraid that tug will cut loose and skedaddle out of the way, but fast. No matter how long that cable is she's using to pull the barge, Tim, the heat will be terrific. I hope you didn't think I'd send Chief Cody out to take care of a routine blaze, son. If the worst happens, I want him to take command of the fight from the tug. If that happens, Captain, our job will be to keep her away from land while you do the best you can, right? Well, I've marked a small island near the mouth of the harbor on this chart. It's in open water, away from property. Please deliver this chart to the skipper of that tug and see that he does everything humanly possible to beach her there. You know every boatman in the harbor, Captain. Do we have a good man in case we need him? Mike Halloran is one of the best. He may already have thought this out himself, but I can't afford to take a chance. Well, that's a fact, but... Captain, suppose for some reason that steel cable from tug to barge didn't hold. Wouldn't that leave all of us pretty helpless? Mm, frankly, that's something I'd rather not think of right now. It's got to hold. What do you say, Chief Cody? I'd say exactly what I would on land. Let's roll! A few minutes later, Captain Jarvis and young Jimmy stand on the bridge, watching the launch with its small crew of men speeding to the nearby barge. The captain quickly notes that all hands aboard the fireboat are at their stations, and then he turns to Jim. I hope you're not worried to see your brother heading away from us into possible danger, son. Well, I guess that's his job, sir. He's a fireman. Well, this is all a matter of time. That's why I finally turned the launch loose. With her speed, she'll be there before we could, Jimmy. She sure is fast, Captain. Well, that's true. Most of the time, however, it's her small size that's important to us. Oh, I should think larger boats would always be better. Not for getting in a fire under a dock or wharf. Then the launch can crawl right up to the flames, which the fireboat couldn't even get near. Oh, gee whiz, I never thought of that. Uh, tell me, sir, how did my brother know that foam stuff you mentioned meant you might run into an oil fire? Well, son, it's specially useful for certain things that water doesn't do an effective job on. Well, how's it work? Well, I haven't time to explain the chemistry of it, Jimmy. But the foam spread out, let's say, over a sea of burning oil, acts like a blanket cutting the flames off from the air, smothering them. It... Well, what's the matter, sir? Uh, nothing, Jimmy, nothing, nothing. Just I uh, happened to notice something aboard the barge. I, I kind of hope Chief Cody noticed it, too. Did you see that, Tim? Aboard the barge? Well, it looks pretty much the same to me, Chief Cody. The color of that smoke suddenly changed. Getting heavier and blacker, I say. You're right, sir. Do you think the fire spread that maybe it's reached the cargo of oil? I just hope we find out before it's too late, son. We've got to get there, get to work on that before it really catches on. Yeah, but that isn't exactly what bothers me, Tim. Oh, you're worried then about the possibility in the back of Captain Jarvis's mind. It will be too late. No, no. I'm worried about the possibility he didn't mention. What's that, sir? Did you ever see an oil tank off in flames, son? Billowing black clouds of smoke and underneath a solid mass of flames that gobbles up anything it touches. You mean this barge fire would be like that? Of course. And that's what bothers me. Not that we'll be either too early or too late, but that we'll climb on board that barge at the exact 
same time it decides to shoot the works. Rookie fireman Tim Collins shields his face from the salt spray and takes another look at the thickening smoke from the barge. Chief Cody's words make his heart skip a beat. Not too early, not too late. The danger is they may arrive the fatal moment, which would be their last. To learn what happens next, be sure to listen to our next exciting episode of The Firefighters. In just a minute, Chief Bob Cody will be back with a tip for you boys and girls as to how you can help your friends, the firemen. But first, an important message. Now, Chief Bob Cody and a special message for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. This is Chief Cody, boys and girls, calling all firefighters to attention. Long ago, all of you learned that matches are dangerous playthings. Now, you can't explain that to your baby brother or sister, but you can see that matches are kept out of their reach, away from playpen or crib. Now, you make that one of your regular assignments, and you'll never be sorry. That is all. Until next time, this is Chief Bob Cody saying, So long! Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it! The Scroll! Let's go! Firefighters! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.